anatomy of a tiger bite. Now, anatomy of a tiger bite is going to dissect this terrible encounter between fragile human flesh and a raw force of nature. Amid the rumors and conflicting accounts, we'll try to find out what happened to Roy Horn that night. We've assembled a unique team of experts. Randy Miller, tiger trainer and Hollywood stunt performer. In the wild, they learn what's called a death grip. But the eyewitness accounts are muddled, and no video evidence is available. So we have to attempt to reconstruct the events ourselves. Wild animal stunt performer Randy Miller will put himself in harm's way. Thanks to Hollywood special effects techniques, we can reconstruct the action based on eyewitness accounts on a computer simulation of the Mirage stage. Then, using Randy Miller's understanding of tiger behavior, we hope to recreate the choreography of those fateful seconds. Randy Miller will don a special suit, one that will allow us to reconstruct the attack virtually. But that won't protect Randy from reality. These are deadly 600-pound animals. But it's real important if at some point a cat gets loose or gets away from me, you guys have to stay put, don't run. Okay, so if you guys just back up a little bit. Tiger's coming through. I teach the tigers to hunt the food on my body. Playful attacks can rapidly escalate into real ones. We get the tiger playful, and they like to play, and they play rough, real rough. If Randy momentarily loses control of the tiger, blasts of carbon dioxide should get it back on track. There you go. Hey. It's the same technique that was used to get Montecor to let go of Roy Horn and does not harm the animal. Randy is now ready to play a deadly game. Hey, no, 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 no. And almost immediately, things go wrong. bit into Randy's thumb while hunting for the meat hidden in his hand. There was a tug of war going on. I couldn't get my thumb out, so I had to distract her, get her attention to get my thumb back. And it's really important, you know, the timing involved. You, 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 you have to nip it in the bud before it escalates and puts you at arm's way. Despite his painful wound, Randy is a professional, and the experiment continues. Okay, which way do you want the tiger to go? We're now ready to analyze those crucial moments of October 3rd, 2003. Roy walks his tiger to the front of the stage. He introduces Montecor to the audience. Montecor then appears to step toward an audience member, according to witnesses, a woman with big hair, and Roy comes around to block the tiger. This is where the attack begins, and the eyewitness accounts diverge. Paul D'Antonio was front and center. This is what he claims he saw. Tiger then just locks on to Roy's uh, right arm. I remember I got a little nervous just because it didn't look right. Trapped in a half crouch, Roy begins to hit the cat on the nose with the mic. You know, it's loud. Over the whole thing. Then, with Horn still leaning over Montecor, Paul saw the tiger move up and latch onto Horn's neck. It was just a more like a, a little lunge. It wasn't like he leaped at him. It was just he just put his head up. Tony and Sandra Cohen were sitting behind the action, here in a sunken audience pit. From this angle, they had a good view of the first part of the attack. He sort of went down to, I think, get the leash. Now Roy, down on his haunches, had his back to Tony and Sandra. It happened so quick. It just happened so quick. The, the next thing, this, this tiger had him by the throat and just, it was like a rag doll. Steve Wynn says the video shows Roy falling backwards over the tiger's paw, and Montecor went for Roy's neck only after he was on the ground. That's something that both our witnesses disagree with. Roy never falls down after he bites him. He basically bites him and then just kind of lifts him up. 
Which version is correct? Was this an aggressive, unprovoked attack, as the eyewitnesses claim? Or was the tiger just responding to a misstep by Roy? The truth, perhaps, is some combination of all the accounts. His arm's in the tiger's mouth. Uh, he uses the mic to help defend himself. Now, the tiger probably got defensive, but didn't let go. Pulled him down to the ground. I could see the cat going up and grabbing the neck. You know, if it, if it just came over and grabbed him this way, it, it would have grabbed the left side of his neck. Roy may have appeared to trip when, in fact, the tiger could have been pulling Roy down to bring his neck within easy reach. But one thing is for sure. Once the tiger had Roy by the neck, getting him to let go would be a tall order. Yeah, I think the cat became more possessive when he got him, when he was on top of him and got him by the throat and had him for a second. With a man dangling from his mouth like a rag doll, Montecor leaves the stage. There, the chaos begins. A blast of cold CO2 causes the tiger to release his grip. What? Roy is free, but his fight for life now begins in earnest. By the time paramedics arrive six minutes later, Roy Horn has lost a massive amount of blood. We've investigated the deadly dance of Roy Horn and Montecor. Now we must delve deeper to find out what happens when the fangs of a born predator sink into human flesh to explore the anatomy of a tiger bite.